this telescope weighs virtually nothing. Today's video is about the new Ascar 80ED. This new model joins Ascar's long line of versatile astrographs, offering a low-cost entry-level option with plenty of flexibility, as we will see. I'll be sharing my experience using it, walking you through its features, benefits, drawbacks, and my test results. Without further ado, let's get into it. My name is Lutza and you're watching The Space Koala. If you've been following me for a while, then you know that I'm a longtime user of Ascar telescopes. They usually offer excellent value for money. A few months ago, I reviewed the SQA55, which I still think is the best um, in its class. And I've also often mentioned how much I love my FRA600 for traveling, along with a few other scopes that I've had the chance to try over the years. Now, those models are multi-element, highly optimized, specialized astrographs, while the ADED is a more affordable entry-level alternative, perfect if you are just starting out or if you want an ultra lightweight travel scope. The ADED has a two element front lens, one of which is an ED lens and the other is a standard with an 80 millimeter aperture and a 560 millimeters of focal length, making it a native F7. It comes in a very basic packaging, just uh, no fancy case, just a cardboard box with protective foam. Included are the two tube rings, a 20 centimeter long Vixen style dovetail and a carrying handle. There are also two slots available for your finder scope, mini PC or ASI Air. The U shield is removable and it can also be reversed to make the scope more compact for travel. At the back, it features a two inch rack and pinion focuser with a dual speed knob and a one to 10 reduction ratio. By default, it comes with a two inch visual back, but of course I will be testing it out for astrophotography. And that is where things get interesting. Ascar offers not one, not two, but three flattener options. There is a one time flattener that just keeps it at an F7, a 0.85 reducer that brings it down to an F5.9, and an ultra fast 0.7 times reducer that takes it down all the way to F4.9, which is great for capturing wider regions of the sky. Here you can see the three available fields of view with an IMX 585, and these are the views that you can get with an IMX 571 APS-C sensor. I mentioned that it's ultra lightweight for travel and I wasn't exaggerating. The tube alone weighs just 1.7 kilograms. That's about 3.75 pounds. And even with the tube rings and the dovetail plates and all that attached, the total weight is only about two kilograms or 4.4 pounds, which is very little for an 80 millimeter scope. As such, you can easily mount it on something like the Skywatcher Star Adventure Star Tracker. I don't have one of those on hand, so I've been using it on my ZWO AM3, which of course handles it effortlessly. The dual speed focuser is compatible with focus motors like the ZWO AAF. I don't think they're strictly necessary for small refractors. I just focus manually and lock it in. Over the past few nights, I've been testing it with different cameras. I tested all three flattener options with a color APS-C sensor to compare the star quality and then I switched to my ASI 585MC Air which is based on the IMX 585 sensor. On paper it could be perfect for beginners or for anyone who needs something extremely portable. Let's go on the computer, look at the images and see if the quality is on par with the expectations. One of the first things I did was take some quick test shots using the ASI 2600MC, which is based on the IMAX 571 sensor. This particular image was taken with a multi-narrow band filter and a 0.7 times reducer. The result shows small stars and no obvious issues in the main field. When zooming into the corners, we see this field remain flat with no clear signs of coma and at least in this single frame, there is no obvious chromatic aberration, 
which was my main concern. However, I did notice something unusual around the brightest stars, some dark-ish artifacts. Once you see they're there, you start seeing them more often. These distortions appear to be radial, mostly pointing towards the center of the image. It made me curious as to what might be causing it, so then I decided to swap out the reducer and test out the one-time flattener, and I also removed the dual band filter just to see how the performance compared. Zooming into the center, we see the same nice tight stars. As we move around the frame and look at the corners, the stars appear well corrected. We can see this in all four corners. However, when we try to locate a bright star around the edges, we see the previous strange artifact from before. This told me two things. First, is that both the flattener and the reducer are doing a great job. They provide a nice flat focal plane. Second, is whatever is causing this aberration visible around the bright stars, it's probably not the corrector, but the telescope itself. Actually, after further testing, all three characters produced the same effect on bright stars, so it seems likely that the cause was somewhere in the optics of the main scope. It is an airspace refractor, and those do produce strange things around bright stars sometimes. I also tested a telescope with the IMX585 sensor, which is one of the most popular sensors at this moment, and potentially a great match for the scope given its entry-level nature. The image you see here is a single shot taken with the 0.7 times reducer. Because of the smaller pixels, any possible issues would show up more clearly. And in fact, they do. However, since the sensor is smaller, the restricted field of view doesn't reach the outer parts of the image circle where some optical limitations are more apparent. This suggests that smaller sensors might be more suitable in terms of field coverage and tolerances, even if the correctors produce a flat field all the way out to APS-C. Of course, once you go through the usual steps of image editing and some software magic, the stars look round and the nebula presents well, but you cannot expect this sharpness straight out of the telescope. I also processed the image of the Andromeda galaxy. It is just a stack of light frames, no calibration frames whatsoever. This result is on par with my expectations for this scope. Of course, you can find imperfections, but the most surprising part for me was that I still don't see any obvious chromatic aberration, which is something I actually expected to be the main limitation of this scope. So let's wrap this up. This is the first time I've reviewed a telescope in this price class, and while there may be similar options on the market, I'm not personally aware of another 80mm refractor that sits quite at this price point. This makes it hard to find something to compare it to. The Ascar ADED sells for uh, $400, with each of the correctors priced at $190. Most users will just choose one corrector based on their camera, bringing the total cost to just under $600. Of course, it doesn't deliver the same results as a high-end refractor, and that is expected. You're working with a budget airspace doublet that naturally comes with some compromises. Better correction at this aperture typically involves more complex optics, which increases the cost. Jumping up in image quality generally means stepping into a very different price category, easily double or more. So then, who is this Ascar ADE-D4? It's aimed at those getting started in the hobby on a limited budget. You get a full 80mm of aperture in a lightweight package, which means it works great with affordable go-to mounts like the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. I would personally pair it with something like the IMX585, which I tested in this video, or maybe the IMX533. That one has a bit larger field and somewhat larger pixels, so it could be a bit more forgiving. But if you're someone who likes to pixel peep and expecting perfect stars all around, 
this probably isn't the scope for you. The same goes if you want to shoot with larger sensors. The optics just weren't really meant for that level of precision. If that is your situation, I'd recommend something like the Ascar V that I recently showed in my build your own smart scope video or even the SQA series that the whole world is raving about right now. Of course, those scopes are in a whole different league. And that contrast is what sets the ADED apart. It fills a gap that isn't often addressed. At around $600, this setup offers more light collecting area than many beginner oriented alternatives in a format that is easy to work with. There are also a few practical features worth mentioning, like the fact that each of the correctors includes a built in rotator. So here's my honest take on the Ascar ADED. It is a basic lightweight refractor that can produce decent results when used within its limits and when expectations are kept realistic. If that's where you're at in your journey, then this could be an option for you. However, it is far from optical perfection, so if that's what you're after, you should look at the more premium lines. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this field test helped you decide if the Ascar ADED is the telescope you're looking for. If you've enjoyed this review, consider subscribing for more and as always, clear skies for the upcoming new moon.